Okay, I'll uh, get started here in regards to today's practice. Um, so out will be Artie Burns with a quad, uh, James Daniels with a quad that, that occurred in Family Fest, Tayshawn Gibson no change with the groin, uh, Tevin Jenkins no change with the, the back tightness, uh, Michael Joseph hamstring, um, he, he, that's new he, for the report here for out. He, he did that the day before Family Fest. Um, so, uh, and, and that, that's, uh, that's new for him. Robert Quinn, no change with his back tightness. Uh, BT Bedora, uh, new. He, his, his, you know, coming off the surgery for him, um, he, his is uh, his knee uh, that he, he kind of just sore, got a little bit sore in the Family Fest. And then Josh Woods at the Family Fest, the quad. So, um, working through all those. Iggy, uh, Will ha he's uh, he had a hamstring that occurred in Family Fest, and that is it there. As far as the the COVID list, uh, we have that's new here is uh, Eddie Goldman, Christian Jones, Pat Scales, and Elijah Wilkerson. Uh, no change on Tariq Cohen, Afedi, and no change on Eddie Jackson. Going back to the COVID, so just to just. Just to be loud and clear as far as how this goes, right? I am not permitted per league rules to get into any type of declarations with vaccinations and, and all the statuses of these of these players, just so you know that. So on the on the front end of that. Um, with these with with these guys, the other part of this is us doing this earlier before practice. This was all going down again as we were speaking and we were looking for clarity. There was no clarity at the time, so they were working through all that. That's the why part of why I didn't bring anything up or talk about it the other day early. So you see now these are this is two times now that something has kind of gone down as we're going through it and waiting for, for more clarity, just to for respect for you guys so you understand that. Um, so it, it's, it's a part of how things go. And again, it's kind of the same message that we said last year, right? Uh, expect the unexpected. Um, we're still in that mode. Uh, we want everybody to to, uh, to stay healthy and safe, but it is what it is. And we had guys step in and, and uh, we adapted. So I um, just wanted to say that on the front end. And other than that, today is a, um, a non-padded day. Uh, and so, but it's a normal practice, non-padded. And then we're going to roll with uh, three straight padded days after this. And there's going to be some live coming up. So we're going to have some situational football and some live football on its way here the next three days, which will be great. So uh, with that, I'll go ahead and open it up. Man, are you are you confident that's the extent of the COVID situation? The guys that you've already put on the list, that's it. Again, that's I feel that way. Yeah, you know that's that's what that's where we're at. So um, that's uh, all we can kind of day by day go by. So full pads fr Friday, Saturday, Sunday. Is that Saturday? full pads three in a row? After today, we go three straight days of pads. And then in those days, um, there's going to be a live element in, in all three of those days. It won't be the whole day, but there'll be periods that are live. Matt, I realize that you can't comment on the individual's vaccination. Yeah. Status, but is this something you can use as a teaching point to your team when you're talking about vaccinations and whether or not you should be? I think for sure. I think these experiences that you go through, it, it allows you to understand that, that things, again, can still happen. It was, it was just like last year, you know. So when you go through these, these scenarios, you realize that um, whether it's you end up having to have to miss practice or practices or you end up having to have to miss a game or games, that's where it probably um, is clear for everybody. And not, and not just players, uh, regardless of your status, I think it's just for all of us to understand that we're still going through this thing and there's, there's – um, you know, there's got to be great communication through all of it, and and then again, it, this is a this isn't just a football thing. You know, this is a worldwide thing that I think we all got to recognize is still going pretty good. From a practical standpoint, if you don't have a long snapper, and not that Cole Komet is, a, I'm sure, a fine. Oh, player. let me just say real quick, Cole Komet after those snaps he had at Family Fest the other day, he came in and said, "I'm not gonna lie, I was a little nervous going into this coach." This is right after the period, and when you snap him. And he only had like two high ones, but the other ones were pretty good. So shoot, who knows? You know, but go ahead. Do you just not kick field goals in practice today? What do you? No, Cole, 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 Cole snap. Cole. Heck yeah, man! Shoot, next guy up. Is there a chance you you're, you're dealing with a false positive here? I, again, you didn't listen to what I said. I didn't ask which guy. <laughs> I didn't ask which guy. Legally, it was. Fair <laughs> again, I, I'm not going to get in. You know, Brad, I'm not going to get in anything with that. I, I'm, that's. The league says, you know, it says it right there, so I can't get into any of that. Matt, what did you learn last 
last year when you had these COVID situations pop up that is helping you this year? Yeah, I would say um, last year for us initially, again, I'll never forget that, that first phone call I got at 3 in the morning. Remember, we talked about that and how, how that went that whole day. Um, this year, uh, zero panic. I mean, when stuff like this happens, we learn from that. And I think uh, it's our job as leaders to make sure that the players feel that and know that. It is what it is. I mean, we're going to educate and encourage all these players to do everything the right way and what we feel can help us and help them as, as people. But at the same time, you're not going to get any panic from me. Hey, when Jenkins was out at the beginning of camp, did you think he would still be out today? When he was out, when? Yeah, when when he started camp out, you know. With, with I had no. I have. Did you think? Did you expect him to be back by this? Point? I had. I have no clue. And again, it kind of to tell you the truth too. With, with the, it, I thought about this after um, we talked the other day when you all asked me that question about Tariq Cohen. I don't think that was fair. What I said to Tariq in regards to the days and weeks. That's not fair to somebody or Dre to put a timeline on somebody. These guys are all different on how they react to things and what they do. And so. Um, to that question with, with Tevin, again, I had no expectations. You have no – every day is a new day for all these guys with the way their bodies go. And so uh, I just know this. If you're not out there, it gives somebody else an opportunity, right, and at any position. Forget just left tackle. And, and I think that uh, it's a – right now in training camp, what a great time for people to know there's opportunities. Is there a point where you will be concerned about the offensive line? Well, we're, we're so many guys out. Yeah, I mean, availability is real. You know, we need guys to to be available. But whenever when you say concern, I think for us, it's okay. What's the opportunity? You know, I mean, it, for for Tevin now with him being a, a you know a, a draft pick uh, for us, we understand, and he wants to be out there. But we can't. We can only control what he's doing with his body, his health with our trainers, and then whatever they tell us, we roll with. And in the meantime, if he's not out there, then other people get, get opportunities. And again, I look at a guy like Larry Borum, who um, you saw got some, got some reps at Family Fest, right? And, you know, we, the, the beautiful thing about that is, and this is a credit to Ryan and his guys, is, you know, we had second and third round grades on Larry Borum. We didn't have fifth round grades on him. We got him in the fifth. So, when, you know, that's how we feel about him. And he gets an opportunity. He went out there and took advantage of it for one day. Can you be consistent with that? And that's going to be how we evaluate. I was, I was going to ask about that. What stood out on the film when you got to watch him? And how did he meet kind of your curiosity going into that? Yeah, well, he's been doing good things this whole camp. And, and uh, he has a, a really positive attitude. Uh, he's extremely focused. He, he fits in well with the guys. Uh, and, and he's coachable. So um, I was not surprised with, with him uh, knowing that, okay, hey, listen, when we just found out, you got to go in there now. You're going to play this, this practice here at left tackle with the ones and, and do your thing. It wasn't, it wasn't big to him. He was not overwhelmed. The film proves it. He did a great job. Uh, and, and, but can you do a great job today? Can you do a great job the next day and so forth? And so that's where – We'll just continue to let him grow. And there's an example of somebody that who knows how well he's going to do or, or what he does or doesn't do, but he's got an opportunity. You talked about intensity. When I talked to you last yeah. year before the Family Fest, <laughs> and you talked about trying to keep it at a high level. Got a bit chippy between the offensive line and the defensive line, even to the point that you brought them in a huddle. What was your reaction to that level of intensity, and what was your message to the players when that happened? So – you love competitiveness. You don't like the combativeness, right? It, when you when you cross that line, and I and you, you start seeing across the league that it, things are getting chippy right now, and other other teams as well. Uh, so it's it's to me it's discipline, and uh, we got to make sure that we understand that when when if you get beat or if you don't like something, you handle it the right way by getting them the next play legally, right? You don't you don't go to throwing punches, you don't go to shove shoving matches, you just don't. And I think that that's a reflection of who we want to be. And it was my job as a leader to, to say, OK, enough's enough. Get your tails back in here. Let's refocus, reshift, and know that it's not going to happen again. And if it does, there'll be consequences. Matt, what's your message to maybe some of the players who are now feeling frustrated because they're doing the right things, referring to COVID, but then there's more testing because of all the things that we're dealing with. They're kind of talking about their frustrations. What's your message to them? Like, listen, we did the right thing, but now we have to go through all this other Stuff. What do you tell them? Yeah, just to well, we tried to we tried to cover that on the front end that there that still could happen. Like we're we're all still learning in this process, and things change. We're we are not past, we are not back to twenty 
uh, 19 where things were normal. We're not there. Uh, and so uh, until we, until everybody says it's normal and there's, there's going to be no issues, um, then the guys have to expect that. And, and then on the front end, we have to learn what the rules are per the league of, you know, vaccinated, fully vaccinated versus non-vaccinated and how that works. And so we're all kind of learning, but I think our guys have been great so far. I really do. Um, they're following all the rules. They're doing what they're supposed to do. And they really have not uh, talked about it too much. I think, but with what happened the other day, they're probably all saying, okay, hey, man, this is real. And what do we got to do? On that, uh, are you aware of what Jimmy Graham tweeted this morning? No. Um, he tweeted that uh, was basically forced into getting the vaccine. Now I'm just confused. I'm just wondering, have, have players addressed you specifically if they have these issues in terms of confusion? No, they haven't. I, you know, again, everybody, the, the, you know, all these guys have opinions and, and beliefs. And again, I'm, I'm not, I am never going to criticize somebody off of what their belief is. Every, we all have it and we're all, we all have the ability to, to voice it. So he has not come to me about any of that. And um, Jimmy and I have a close enough relationship that uh, if there's an issue that him and I would, you know, have that one on one. And that was just, you know, just that was in response to the, the new daily testing that the NFLPA is proposing. That's sure. What he was sure. Proposing. Yeah. I, you know, it's, it's, uh, it, you know, there's, there's stuff going on every day with this. And I think just everybody trying to figure out what the best thing is to do for everybody to be safe, you know, and not just in the sports world, but in life in general. I mean, you know, it's every state's a little different in what they're doing and masks, no masks, and things are, things are certainly uh, changing. Matt, has, has Mike Patton given or helped you offensively as far as giving you insight into how he kind of attacked you or approached you in those battles? We've had some good. Does that is that part of the? Yeah, the with, without a doubt. I mean, and, and you guys know the respect that I have for Coach Pat, and we used the off season a lot. He he was great with the defense, but we also pulled him to the offensive side and did just that. I had some good sit downs with him, and um, I'd be foolish to not find out um, what he thought about our, our offensive um, personnel and what he thought about the offensive play calling and what he, like, tendency-wise. And um, you, you got to pick his brain. I mean, he's, he's been in this league for a long time, and he's been really beneficial to both sides. In general, is there anything about your play calling that he kind of exposed or let you know that you didn't know before? There might, be, there might be a few things, but I sure as heck am not saying any, anything out here. <laughs> but that but yeah, yeah, there, there's a few. There, for sure, no. There's there's some things. I, I think probably big, more than anything is these defensive coordinators. They get tendencies of when you call a specific concept, right? And then they get tendencies of what you do with personnel. So if you have a certain personnel, and they might look for something. If you have a if you're at somewhere in the field, field position wise, there might be a tendency that you call a specific concept, run or pass here. And so those are the things. And at the other point, also on the flip end, I ask them what stresses you. Like when you're practicing and preparing all week in practice for us, what were things that, that stressed you? And then who were players that, that stressed you? And again, that's going to be confidential with us. What is uh, Tom Herman's role in training camp and how will that be different once the regular season? Yeah, uh, again, it's, it's very similar to like a, what a quality control coach would do, a lot, a lot of that. Um, and then being able to do quote unquote, you know, whether it's uh, studies or special projects, and for again for for both sides, not just for the offense. So um, that those those uh, additions have been great. They've been awesome, and uh, you know I think we're going to be able to really use them and to our advantage for the whole season. Has he been working with Tabor during practices? Some is that yeah. him out there? Yep, okay. yep. All helping out in different different areas, and and he's been great. And obviously the. The Chicago Bears have a very public, you know, footprint. Do you ever feel like you're kind of having to straddle the line between backing your players and what their beliefs might be and what might be a good public message for the general public given just the world we're living in right now with the pandemic? Sure. Yeah, that's a it's definitely a unique um, challenge in the fact that you do have I mean, again, you have ninety players that all have opinions for different reasons on what they want to do for the team and what they want to do for themselves. You also have the message outside, like you're saying. Um, and and so we as leaders, meaning head coaches, ha have, you know, you see some head coaches are a little more vocal than others. Nothing wrong with that. And some you, you don't see say a word about it. Nothing wrong with that. So what we do is internally is is try to help them answer questions that they might have. 
That's all we can do. And then we support their families too. Like we'll get on Zoom calls with their families and, and be there to answer questions for them. And, and in the end, you got to be able to say why. Why are you telling me this? Whether it's whatever it is, just give me the why. If you got the why, now you can make your decision on what you want to do. And that's all, that's literally all you can do. And you got to be open and honest. And whatever people believe or, or get into, that's up to them. And um, otherwise, it can be a distraction that takes you away from football. And again, like I said, right now, what I'm trying to do is really hone in and focus in on the X's and O's part. Now, what was your process on it? Would you have gotten the vaccine if you didn't essentially have to for work? Again, that, that's, I'm going to keep that between me and my family. But um, it, it's just, there's so many parts of that question that I think everybody's a little bit different on what you would do. And so, um, again, I, I just, it, it's, it's so, for, for me to be at the podium answering questions like that, I think it, you, could, you could say one wrong thing and it goes the wrong way in what I say. And I just don't want to, I, I just, people can do what they want to do is, is kind of how I look at it. I believe in that, but at the same time, we want to, with where we're at, we want to educate and encourage them to do it so that we can all be able to move on and try to listen to, to what the experts are saying. Yeah, so, much of, so much of coaching is trying to get 90 guys or 53 guys to maybe do something they don't all want to do mm -hmm. but for the good of the team and their teammates and everything like that. Have you found that similar strategies work when trying to explain the value of a vaccine or, or, or anything like that? I mean, no, Not necessarily, Pat, because we, we talked about, like, we really haven't gotten into a whole lot of maybe what you th all think we do when we're in meetings and stuff. Like, we're just – this probably more about players talking to each other um, about what they want to do or what their beliefs are. But we don't have – now, last year, if you asked me that question, I'd say, yeah, every day we talked about it. It was brought up. It's not, it's not talked about right now um, it, it, unless asked. It's really not. I mean, we're doing football all the time. We're at practice. Uh, I don't think people are thinking about it. We're, we're in meeting rooms. Um, we're just going about our, our daily routine, and it doesn't get brought up unless something comes up, you know, and then now you start having some questions here or there. But it's just not, uh, it's a, it's just not something. We're, we're worried about X's and O's right now. Good. Thank you, man.